Pleasure today to welcome on owner of Track House Racing and a new Cup Series owner at that, Justin Marks. I actually want to start off with a question about your driver because I see you got a little Daniel Amigo swag yeah. going on. Love that. Yeah, he. Uh, well, I, this was my first piece of official Daniel Suarez swag that I got just the <laughs> other day. So, uh, yeah, it's been um, it's been great working with Daniel. I mean, he's he's very hungry um, and very focused and dedicated. Uh, and you know, that's, that's great because I think that, you know, sometimes teams place so much emphasis on their processes and their technology and their engineering and their cars. And there's always this battle between driver and owner, right? It's just sort of like, well, you know, owner's expectations, you know, driver's expectations, th these kinds of things. Um, but you know, for me, I've always maintained the fact that, that it's just simple. The driver is the most important part of this entire equation. If you don't have a guy sitting in the seat that can get the job done and is driven and focused and dedicated, then all the work that you're doing just doesn't matter. And I believe Daniel's that guy and he's so far been proving so. It's very well said. And I got to say you, Pitbull, Armando, whatever we want to call him, uh, Daniel, you guys have all been like extremely well-spoken in the past few months. Um, and you specifically, you've had a busy past few weeks, month or so. Let's go over the little clip notes. January 15th, you announced Pitbull joining on as a partner with Trackhouse. And then February 4th, which was yesterday as of this recording, you get announced on the board of the Music City Grand Prix with one Justin Timberlake. You're just flexing all over us. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Well, I mean, look, I, I've been doing this a long time. I mean, I've, yeah. I've been in this game for, you know, 20 years, just just over 20 years. And, and you know, a, a lot of time as a driver, obviously, but but it's always been an ambition of mine to, to build, to really build a legacy. And, you know, I think the time, the timing was right in the last, you know, two years to really start, start pulling back from at least professional racing uh -huh. and, and start, you know, committing to, to the rest of it. Because, you know, I just took a step back and I looked at, I looked at all of the major stakeholders in this industry, not just NASCAR, but in the entire motorsports industry in the United States. And a lot of the guys that have a lot of influence and, and control a lot of properties are at the end of their careers. And, you know, that next generation of people that are going to build mo true motorsports businesses and empires, those people need to start doing that work now. And I'm not yet 40. And I just felt like, you know, the time, the time is right to, to start making those moves. So you know, I've, I've got some friends that I've known for a long time that have been working very hard over the past four or five years to put the Music City Grand Prix together and, and finally able to, to get the agreement done with IndyCar and with the city of Nashville. And so it's an honor to, to, to be a part of that, to make the investment of that, because I, I really believe in, in that vision. Um, and it's going to be an incredible event. I think it's going to be one of the crown jewels of, of American motorsport events um, for a number of reasons. That's a whole rabbit hole there. But, you know, the track house, getting back to track house, I mean, you know, the, um, the vision of that team is to just try to do things different, is to try to really uh, cultivate a fan following and be a popular team in the sport, not, not yeah. just tied to the driver, but, but to be a team brand that people are fans of. There's, there's not a lot of teams that have been able to do that. And I wanted to build something that's more like a stick and ball sport where people just take a lot of pride in whatever their team is, regardless of who's playing for it and who comes and goes and, you know, over the years. That's, that's the grand vision of, of track house that coupled with the fact that, you know, we really want to be storytellers and we want to tell compelling stories. We want to be active in the communities. We want to empower young people. We want to use motorsport as a platform to, um, to try to make some good happen in the world and in the country. And, and that aligns so well with what Armando is trying to do and doing in his career with his slam schools and the message in his music and his philanthropic efforts and his entrepreneurial efforts. So, I mean, it just, it just fits so well. It was almost serendipitous. It just came together quickly, authentically. He's been a great partner. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I think what everybody is seeing right just in the last month is, is just sort of like a, the tip of the iceberg. It's not all happening just right now. I mean, this yeah. has been work that's been happening for a long time. It's just nice to see it come together. And it shows because, you know, the proof is in the pudding and a lot of things are preparation. A lot of things are opportunity you now have the opportunity to perform because of the preparation that you guys have made. Now, I want to, I want to stick on the aspect of what you touched on making track house kind of like a stick and ball sport type of thing. Um, I know you have visions of having the team based in Nashville, making it an identity tied to the city. You obviously have close ties down there as well. 
that specific idea within track house and we will get to stem and and all the other ideologies in a minute where did that specific idea come from of creating it as a culture rather than just a race team well i mean look when the what the very first thing that happened was uh, so I had, I had been making it known inside the industry with whoever would listen that that you know NASCAR has an opportunity that NASCAR was on a bit was on a trajectory that was just unsustainable and that you know they have to find a way to make these teams more sports enterprises rather than technology companies I was I, this all started in 2016 I was racing racing for Chip Ganassi racing in the Xfinity series and I walked into the shop one day and I looked up the second floor and I looked in the fab shop and I looked at engineering and I went, this isn't a race team. This is a manufacturing corporation. And we're all struggling to find sponsors because we're spending millions and millions of dollars designing and manufacturing and research and, and engin- you know, engineering research development. Right. And all that. But man, if this sport could get to more of a stick and ball model uh, where it's a sports enterprise and it's about the athletes and it's about the people and the performance of those people, um, then, then I think it's a compelling property and one that I would be interested in pursuing. But at the time, Barney Visser was spending $30 million a year. And it, and it, just, it was an ar- arms race between the OEMs and who would spend tens of millions of dollars more than the next guy. And it wasn't feasible. Anyway, so when they go to the new car, you know, my antenna went up and went, okay, if this is truly what they say it's going to be, then this is that opportunity, right? To where the, the, the success or failure of an enterprise is going to be really deeply connected to the talent of the people, to the culture, to building cohesiveness, because you don't have to worry about, I just don't have the money to build the same spindles that Penske has. Yep. Um, we're all getting them from the same place. So it's going to be about the people, obviously technology, SIM, aero, that stuff will all still be a part of it. So, so, so when that all started, I went, okay, we're going to start a cup team let's look at what a cup team is and what a cup team should be. And if you just had a blank you know, sheet of paper, which we had, how would you build a race team? Forget about anything you know about racing. Forget about everything you know about how Ganassi works or how Hendrick works or any stuff. It's just start over, forget about all that stuff and just look at it. What would it be? And it became very clear that if, if you're gonna build a race team that is representative of the future, that is consistent with consumer behavior, with demographics, with the social media movement, with how young people identify authenticity and find authenticity, then it can't be Justin Marks racing. And it has to be a brand. It has to be something that that is bigger than the owner, is bigger than any one person, that is a movement and an idea. And Red Bull kind of did this, right? Like like 10 years ago or whatever it was, but... um, but I mean, it just, it just wasn't the right time because it, you know, for obvious reasons. So, um, so, I mean, that, that was sort of the impetus. I was like, okay. And then, and then, you know, really put the vision together of building something that connects authentically with people that builds a brand that people are like, I'm a, I'm a member of the track house fan base. I'm excited about what they're doing. And that means, you know, that means it, it, it's, you know, obviously being competitive on the racetrack, but it means partnering with people like Armando. It means rethinking apparel. It means, you know, social, a social presence, content that we put out there that looks different, that's compelling and emotional and all that. And those are all just the pieces. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's, that right there in a nutshell is just sort of the whole vision and business design of Trackhouse. Long-winded answer for you, but, it's, a, but it's, a, it's important to understand why we're doing what we're doing. 100%. And I apologize for this generic question, but it, it's really one that I'm curious of. Your vision that you just outlined, how do you make that happen? Because it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to put the pieces into motion, get the driver, get the sponsors on board, get the initiatives out there. And you obviously know it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in two, three years, right? right? The next gen, uh, you know, next gen coming in is going to help, no doubt about that. Yeah. And results on the track with Daniel, that will help, no doubt about that. But to get this vision to go where you want it to, how do you make that happen? What steps do you take on a day-to-day basis? Do you have goals set for five, 10 years down the road? How does this conglomerate that is going to be track house? How does that come together? Well, there's some luck involved for sure before I take any kind of credit. Um, but I mean, a big, a big part of it is people. I mean, it was really important to make sure that I aligned with people that had a lot of experience, had a lot of talent and understood what the mission was. And mm-hmm. that, start, that started with Ty Norris. And that started with getting somebody like Ty and saying, I, you need to be my soldier on this and you need to fight for this for me every day because here's a guy that 
you know, built and ran DEI, built and ran MWR, you know, has done sponsorship deals, you know, he's managed people, he knows everybody in the industry, he's been in NASCAR, you know, through certain, uh, a number of transitional phases. Uh, he was working in Nashville at the time, doing, you know, working on some new placing brands with music artists and all that. So that was a huge part of it, because then I had somebody that then I didn't have to go out and learn how to do everything, right? I mean, he just said, here's, here's how we, we need to sort of proceed and, I, and I'll fight for this vision, I'll pursue this vision. And then it was like, driver. And we wanted Daniel, I wanted Daniel really bad. And at the time, and maybe this is luck, maybe this is salesmanship, maybe it's just him identifying with my plan and, tr and, and trusting me. But you know, at the time, he had offers to drive for some pretty big deals that he all turned down to come drive for us. And, um, and I think that when I talked about what I wanted to accomplish, um, he just decided that he was gonna trust it and jump in there. And then, you know, and, and then, you know, our operational partner with RCR, you know, we, it was very important to me to have a close working relationship with an existing team. Mm -hmm. So I could slot right into fab shops and engineering and, and you know, personnel and some front office and, and things like that. So I didn't have to figure out how to build race cars in our first year, especially the last year of the current gen car. Yep. Um, and we got that in RCR. So you put those three pieces together, I got Ty Norris, Daniel Suarez and RCR sort of helping us from a competition standpoint. That's like, you know, that was most of the game right there. So, um, so since then it's just been like, you know, tree by tree by tree in this giant forest, just sort of, you know, blocking and tackling, like making sure that th these, these little things are done, staying honest to the vision. Um, but I've got really, really good people. I've gotten lucky. You asked about, you know, the future. You're right in the fact that, you know, this is, it's not lost on me that they're, that, that track house and Suarez and Armando are taking up a lot of the media bandwidth right now, leading into Daytona. Um, and there's going to be a lot of eyes on us and it's going to be an exercise in managing expectations. I mean, you know, it's, it's, for us to look at that side of it and go like, man, we're gonna go down there and win the race and we're gonna make the chase and we're gonna figure out how to get to the second, you know, like that, that would be great, but... it would be great. It would be great, but but let's take a step back and Definitely. remember that we're racing against Stuart Haas racing and Joe Gibbs racing and Penske and Hendrick and on all these guys. So, you know, it's, I tell the guys in the shop and on the pit crew is like, you know, let it's just about execution. It's about winning the day. It's about getting better every day. And I don't have expectations this year that I have like, look, it's going to be a failure if we don't finish top 20 points, or it's going to be a failure if we don't make the chase. We're not, I, I, we're not in a position to be putting number, those sort of, sorts of, of goals on the board. Mm -hmm. I think it's like, you know, grow our, our uh, communication structure, you know, pit crew, work hard, get a little bit better every day you know, Daniel and the mechanics, let, let's work hard to figure out how to make the cars a little bit better every week. And those kind of results will take, but make no mistake. My goal with starting this race team is to win the NASCAR cup championship. If that takes five years, if it takes eight years, but that is the goal. I'm not doing this to, I'm not doing this to try to, to just have fun or hang out with Pitbull in Miami. Like, I'm not, it's, you know what I mean? So it's, I'm doing this because I want to win races and win yeah. championships. And as I mentioned at the top of the call, you know, the, the ownership base in the sports at the end of their careers, somebody is going to have to build the race team of the next decades and mm -hmm. it might as well be us. Why not us? Because it sounds more, but Roger Penske, Jack Rouse, they're not going to be here forever. Neither is Rick right. Hendrick, neither is Gene Haas. You know what I mean? And right. you're in it now. Pitbull's with you. Danny Hamlin's in it now. MJ's yep. with him. Matt Tift and BJ McLeod are together in it now. So that's a good thing. And I'm glad you pointed that out. Like that's very concrete. Your goal is to win cup championships because I'm not going to lie a couple of times when I've heard you talk and read some articles, you are so incredibly passionate about reaching more people and specifically different demographics that NASCAR has not reached over the last 10, 20 years with the STEM initiatives and whatnot that obviously you guys want to win. And I was going to ask, like, what is your guys' main goal? What is your priority? Is it to reach more people or is it to win races? But you answer that right there because they don't have to be two different things. They can be together and they go hand in hand. Well, look, I, I you know, I, what, the way that I think about it is, you know, we are not building a race team that markets itself. We're building a marketing company that races. 
And, you know, I go back to something like Elon Musk. They asked Elon Musk, you know, what, why Tesla? Why, why build Tesla? Why electric cars? He says, I, I didn't set out to build the best car company in the world. He said, I set out to build the best company in the world. And I just happen to be, I believe in EVs. And so I kind of think about track house like that. Like, you know, we, when I think of it more, uh, it, it may sound ambiguous. It may, you know, it's, but it's, you know, I want to build a marketing platform and a company that truly connects with people deeply and uh, on a number of different levels. And that might be, that's through the excitement of race cars at 200 miles an hour. It's through empowering minority youth communities and educating them on the STEM disciplines and opportunities in their life. Uh, it, it's and, and sort of everything in between, in between um, apparel lines and like lifestyle brands and storytelling and all this and building it in a way where if a company wants to come into the sport of NASCAR to promote a product or a service, Trackhouse is the place they got to be period, because of all these things that we're doing. So we want to build an enterprise here that is truly the most compelling and valuable and viable partnership for companies that want to market and promote in the sport. And, you know, I also believe, and this is where, you know, Armando and I are just so, so closely connected is that we're living in a world now where it is not a responsibility, but a requirement for companies in America to be doing something to empower the next generation, to be doing something to make their communities better, to, to try to like make life as Americans better, however small it, it, it can be, right? If it's a sandwich shop on the corner, they give out a free sandwich a week to a family in need. If it's amazon.com, give away $5 billion to educational initiatives in the cities that you're set up in, like, and everything in between. And so, and, and I truly believe in that. And that's what we're doing is track house. So, I mean, I think in, in the next couple of weeks after the 500, we'll roll out kind of what that looks like. Um, we're in the planning stages of it right now. I'm really, really excited about it. But I mean, you asked just, just holistically what track house is. It's just, I want to build the next great motorsports company. Well said. Um, I, I want to be conscious of your time. So I'll ask one final question. It can be real quick. Just I, you're, I love talking about this stuff, man. <laughs> I know, man. <laughs> I know, I know. And we'll have to get back together and linked yeah. up because I really want to delve deeper into it because not, not to blow smoke. I, I really think you're now the most well thought, well versed owner in the cup series. Now I just love listening to you speak and how passionate you are about mm -hmm. it. Um, but when the car rolls off at Daytona here in a few days and you see that number 99 paint schemes are fire, by the way, mm -hmm. all year long. Um, what, what are the emotions going to be? Is it relief, excitement, are you in disbelief? One word, what's going to be? Relief. Relief. I mean, um, because for a number of reasons, I mean, one is that it's just been a tremendous amount of work. It's just been a tremendous amount of work putting all the pieces in place and, no and I'm a racer. So it's going to be nice to get to the point where we're just, where we can really focus on racing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can see the results on a weekly basis of the effort that you put in. Um, you know, we're also, when we're talking to partners and we're talking to like people, uh, NASCAR to Fox and NBC about all the stakeholders, everybody about things we want to do, we're still just talking about an idea. Like we haven't done anything yet. And so going to Daytona is going to be like, you know, now we're going to be able to put, you know, we're going to build the, the proofs in the pudding. Like we're going to be able to like be in the game every yeah, week. So it's like relevant. We're not just going to be talking about what we're going to do. It's like, yeah. we are doing it. So yeah. So it's just relief. It's relief that all the hard work was was uh, was worth it, and now we're we're not building, we're operating. We're still building, but we're <laughs> racing, and um, so it's going to be awesome. I mean, I I have been so so in the weeds on this thing for so long that when that race starts, I am going to sit on top of my motorhome with a beer in my hand, and I'm going to just be a race fan for three hours, and I'm going to cheer on the 99 car just like all of our fans and all of our partners are too, and it's going to just be a great day. Well, let me say on behalf of everybody listening and watching, you deserve that beer and have, have one on the fans and on me because you, you deserve it. It's, uh, it's well-deserved, obviously, and it's, it's been a joy talking to you. Seriously, um, I, I'm really looking forward to see what you guys have in store and really looking forward to hearing, hearing from you and talking to you throughout the year because, like I said, uh, you, your passion shines through clear as day. And uh, the sport needs more people like you. So I think the sport overall is better off for having you in it. So I thank you for your time today. I appreciate that anytime.